So I don't know how many of you have seen Hocus Pocus 2. It's now streaming on Disney+, Plus. not an ad, by the way. And it was okay. I think that the first Hocus Pocus is better. I mean, you just, you can never do better than the classic. You know, sequels are never going to have as much love as the originals so you know it wasn't it wasn't bad though i thought it was cute um it's nice to see the original sanderson sisters back uh bet midler sarah jessica parker um the nun from sister act is that the same lady i'm not really sure i don't know her name but i, I love them all really really fun um either way this lady right here has some thoughts about hocus pocus and her thoughts are if you watch it uh, then you're inviting Satan into your home. So let's see what she has to say. A worst case scenario is that you unleash hell. Oh, on okay. Your kids. Excuse me. I said you're inviting Satan into your home, but you can unleash hell on your kids. So it's a little bit more serious than I initially uh, implied. And in your home, Jamie Gooch is a mother of three. And, and the I just have to say, I'm not going to go too hard against her because her last name is Gooch. Um, so life didn't really hand her a good, <laughs> a good deck. If your last name is Gooch, I'm so sorry. I, I just, I can't be that mean to you. But yeah, they do look stereotypically Christian. Um, this man has a very aggressively Christian face, does he not? Like, he's one of those folks that stands at colleges and he hands you those little mini Bibles. He's one of those people you can tell. She doesn't go to the college, but she definitely believes everything that uh, he tells her. Um, but I, I just, I have to say off the bat, and again, I paused it like two seconds in and I'm already talking. Uh, we'll get to it, okay? But these children, she has no idea how much they're going to grow up and hate her guts for her religious views and his religious views. And I'll share my personal story here in a moment, but let's, let's let her talk. And I'll try not to pause it, but it's, uh, it's going to be very tough. Gooch Family Farms in Troy. I love everything to do with house and home. I believe everything starts here. This time of year, fall harvest is heavily celebrated the Gooch in Family household. Farm. Halloween <laughs> is not. No. It grieves me, the thought of exposing our kids to darkness. Gooch says there's a spiritual <laughs> stop, stop, war no, stop, waged stop, against stop. home. The thought of exposing our kids to darkness. Oh my god, she's crying at the thought of her kids watching Hocus Pocus 2. Uh, I want to honestly go to the highest cliff I could find and jump off of it in, in Minecraft. I can't take it. I can't take these people, I swear to fucking god. Gooch Family Farm. Imagine that. Gooch Family Farm. I'm not buying from them. I don't want to know what they, uh, they're offering. America, and Hollywood is part of the problem. And right now, one film in particular. The whole movie is based on witches harvesting children for blood sacrifices. In a recent Facebook <laughs> post. I was a little bit scared when I hit post because I was afraid of the reaction that I would get. Goose sure. advises moms against letting their kids watch Hocus Pocus 2. I believe whatever comes in our TV screens, there are things attached to that. I've seen for myself the things that I've watched with my eyes or heard over a TV screen. They become manifested in, in real life. Everybody. Like what? Like if I watch a movie where there is a wealthy person, will money fall through the television? If you watch a movie where somebody is getting laid, will ass manifest in your living room? Like what she's really referring to here is spiritual warfare. So I'm being facetious, obviously where um, there's this Christian belief that what you allow on your television, it's essentially a portal that's inviting things into your home. So like when I was young, for example, I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter because to watch Harry po Potter would be inviting witchcraft into our home, which is effectively the devil. But little did I know back then, it would be inviting turfs into our home, which is even worse than the devil. Uh, but I'll, I'll let her continue. Thinks it's fake and innocent. But they could be it casting is. any type of spell that they want to. Anything could be coming through that TV screen into Gooch. your home. We have Gooch. to steal their soul. She says most of so the when, feedback So when is she says that we have to steal their soul, she thinks that they're literally sucking your soul through the TV. She's like, <sighs> and then your soul's gone. <laughs> it's like the soul eater in God of War, where once it has your soul, that's it. There's no afterlife, no heaven, no hell, nothing. So you got to be careful. 
because what's on TV is very real. This is just, it, it's sad to me because she doesn't know the difference between fiction and reality. She thinks that there's actual gateways to hell. And I had this thought too, but the difference was that I was like 11. This is a grown woman, okay? Yeah, sucking the gooches from the television screen. Good one, Oblivion. Absolutely. This gooch doesn't want to get sucked through the television screen. I'm. We have to stop. Okay, the name. I cannot fucking handle this. Why can't she just have a normal name like Smith so I'm not making gooch jokes the whole fucking stream? Positive, but she knows her opinion isn't for everyone. And that's because okay. it's fucking she stupid. It's healthy to stir up conversations, just not cauldrons. How do you feel? How do you respond to people who are going to say, you're crazy? It's just a movie. It's all in good fun. It, it has been and always has been. Then the post was not for you. But isn't the same thing true? She's on the television screen right now. Are, wh by watching her, are we inviting Jesus into our homes? Does it work the opposite way as well? Perhaps she does believe that. I don't really know. This was for people that have been on the fence on, on the de decisions they need to make for their family. While Gucci's opinion may not Stop. be the most fun, she says if putting it out there changes even one person's mind, it was worth it. I think at the end of the day, I want people to walk away with discernment. If you, you're watching this, just start thinking. Start thinking for yourself and even overthink and consider all the options of what you're partaking in. In Troy, Rissa Shaw, News 10. Okay, chat doesn't believe me. This is a real news report. So this is not The Onion, by the way. This is KSLA News 12. Um, and... It's totally believable because, again, there are people like this. There are people like this. American Jesus loves the Gooches. Absolutely. You know, Gooch is really spreading the good gospel here. I, I just, I'm so sorry for her that her name is Gooch. Um, I don't want to go too hard on her. But listen, if you don't think that people like this exist, they do. Okay? And at the beginning of this segment, I said that her kids are going to grow up to hate her. Well, that's because... I was one of those kids, right? My parents weren't as strict as the church was, but there were individuals who would guilt trip my parents if they didn't take away what they perceived were evil things. And my co-host just left, so let me go ahead and switch to solo cam. Um, but anyways, members of the church, for example, they would always harass my parents um, because they let me play video games. And I didn't even play violent video games. I would play you know, really in innocent games like Mario Brothers. But I wasn't allowed to play Mario Brothers because there were ghosts in Mario Brothers. And ghosts are bad because apparently they defy the word of God. I don't remember the specific logic, but ghosts didn't exist because God had a plan for those souls. So they wouldn't just linger. They would either go to heaven or hell. Um, so because there were ghosts in Mario, that was bad. Remember Animal Crossing? Completely innocent game. Well, there was a fortune teller in that, so I um, I didn't necessarily get guilt tripped by my parents, but at that time, I was thoroughly brainwashed, and I saw the fortune teller, and I thought, God damn it, I can't play this. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie couldn't play that. Um, that was evil. My pastor, he wrote this whole, I guess, op-ed for the church newspaper explaining how evil Pokemon was, and that um, there was this story of um i should move this so i'm not gonna get copyright claimed by disney but um there's this story of a kid who saw pokemon the movie in theaters and when there was red eyes on the screen from like mewtwo or something the kid fell into a trance thus proving how evil it was now i think the actual story had something to do with the kid who maybe had epilepsy i'm not really sure what the details were but my pastor claimed that like you will essentially Possess your kid with the devil if you take them to see Pokemon. Now, again, my my parents were a little bit more laissez-faire, even though they would kind of get harassed by members of the church for not, like, policing me accordingly. But on that one, they had guilt-tripped me so much that I ended up getting rid of Pokemon myself because I thought that I would go to hell. So I got rid of all of my Pokemon cards, all of my Pokemon, like, um, stuffed animals. I had a really cute Pikachu stuffed animal. Had to get rid of that. And I can tell you, that doesn't just go away when you're an adult and you realize all of this is bullshit. You build up a real resentment towards the people who fed these lines to your parents. And my parents were adults, so I blame them as well, right? Um, but all of these people 
who are pumping that shit into my parents' heads. I really blame them. And I could tell you that my nieces and nephews and other friends who also experienced the same thing that I did absolutely fucking hate their parents and anyone from the church who pushed that. So this lady is just setting herself up to have all of her kids hate her. They're not going to like the goose. Blood sacrifices. Because she in is, a recent faith. She is putting them through hell. When you're a kid, you're not supposed to be worried about what is and isn't evil. You're just supposed to have fun, right? Play video games. But these evangelicals, they get to a point where they're so silly that every little aspect of your life has to be hyperanalyzed, but they never apply that same standard to themselves, right? So the church really liked to police what uh, the boys did. Right, because boys were more evil. They played video games, whereas girls were more innocent. They liked Disney, um, although now they probably say that Disney's evil. But I remember really pushing back because um, I couldn't play with anything, uh, any video game that had a witch or any wizard bullshit in it. Uh, but there were a lot of Disney movies that were accepted at the church where there were witches in it. Snow White is an example, and I pushed back saying, "Well, how come?" The witch in my video game is bad. I, I think it was like Banjo-Kazooie that I was referring to, Gruntilda. How come Gruntilda's evil, but the witch in Snow White, that's fine. And the answer was something to the effect of, yeah, well, it's, you know, uh, good versus evil. The story is glorifying God. It's, all, it's always some bullshit. But it's like, well, the same is true with, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, good versus evil, right? So it's just, um, it is absolutely insufferable. And I swear to God... I hold a grudge. I feel like my childhood was ruined. Like there was a good five years of my childhood where I was miserable because I, you know, I, I had a difficult time making friends when I was younger. I suffered from a lot of mental illnesses, in particular, depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. So I kind of felt like this weirdo, right? So the one thing that really uh, I enjoyed was video games, you know, Pokemon, uh, you know, different types of video games. But... I couldn't have that. So, you know, you take that away from a kid, they kind of become miserable and they spiral and you just end up hating the people who feed your parents and you this bullshit. It's not just my parents. Like I was brainwashed too, but the difference was that I was a child. So I don't blame myself. I don't feel embarrassment or shame because of what I did when I was younger, because, you know, you just kind of do what your kids or what your, excuse me, what your parents want you to do. So I just thought, well, fuck, I mean, I don't want to go to hell, so I better listen to my parents and listen to the church. And even if they're wrong, you know, what's the worst that happens to me? I lose another video game that I was previously playing, you know? So I remember, like, and I was one of these kids where um, I had to over-police myself just to make sure that I was doing my due diligence and I could have things. So I'd call up GameStop with, like, a list of video games, and I'm like... Hi, can you tell me if this game has any witchcraft in it? Because <laughs> I'm not going to be allowed to play it. I even, I kid you not, I called the 700 Club as a, uh, like, 12-year-old kid asking, like, explaining these video games to them. Like, okay, well, this one, it has a witch in it. Like, I remember explaining Animal Crossing. I'm like, okay, so there's a fortune teller in it, and that's definitely evil. I know that's evil, but... The game doesn't force you to go see the fortune teller. So if I just want to build my town and fish and make friends, I can just do that without going to the fortune teller. And I remember the 700 Club person telling me as a 12-year-old, knowing this was a kid that I called in, saying, well, what does the Bible say? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. As a little prepubescent kid, he's like, open up Ephesians 12. Well, I don't remember the verse, but like he told me to open up the Bible. So I opened up the Bible and it's something about um, witchcraft. He's like, there's your answer. And I'm like, okay. And it's like, God damn it, another thing I can't fucking do. It's just, yeah, the prayer line. I call the prayer line. Yeah. So listen, folks. If you are religious and you put your kids through this, I promise you, your kids are going to fucking hate your guts. And when they finally leave the religion, because that's inevitable if you put them through this, you are going to have to bend over backwards to repair that relationship with them, okay? The reason why I don't hold a grudge against my parents is because I was able to convince them, well, convince my mom at least that religion is bullshit and get my, you know, dad to essentially move away from some of these more extremist elements of the religion, right? Yeah, the 700 Club really fucking weird 
absolutely i used to call in you know um another thing is halloween halloween's coming up right i couldn't celebrate halloween because that was evil you're letting the devil into your life and i remember when i lost halloween as a kid another thing it's like oh well i fucking used to like halloween i guess i can't do this um i remember calling the 700 club because they had this episode where you um shouldn't celebrate halloween because it's evil yada 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 but they were giving away a free book on why halloween is evil so i called and i ordered the book and i got the free book (laughs) i don't think i still have it but yeah uh why do we need organized religion in modern society look at the harm that is being done to families uh, and kids with religion yeah i'd argue that you don't and if you are just religious and you don't force it on your kids i think that that's totally different right my friend she grew up and went to the same church as my parents but her mom didn't force things on her as bad uh as badly as it was forced on me so you know it's not it's not as big of an issue for her but yeah for me every element of my life everything that i liked was hyper analyzed and i ended up giving away like most of the things that i owned just because it was bad i it even got so bad to the point where um, any music that wasn't Christian music, I had to get rid of. And you know, when you're like a, a young teenager, I was like maybe 12 or 13 music was really like my thing. I loved music. I was really getting into it because you know, teenager, they love music. Um, and I, I got rid of all of my CDs that were not Christian. All I could have were Christian CDs because if it doesn't glorify God, then there's no point in its existence. And, and like long story short, I'm droning on here. It was miserable. I look back at my um, family's religious streak as the worst time in my life. Traumatized me to no end. And getting out of that, I cannot tell you how free I feel mentally. Um, And I just feel bad for, you know, the kids who have to put up with this, who have to deal with this now. Because uh, glorify God, super jet guy, means that if it's not something that is explicitly like pro-Jesus, or like is a worship music or something like that, then you shouldn't listen to it because every waking minute of your life should be dedicated to um, glorifying God. So that's what that means essentially. Like why play a video game if, you know, you could be spending that time to praise Jesus? That's the kind of guilt trips that they put on you. But it really like I kind of got out of the brainwashing when I saw how hypocritical they were. When I realized like when we went to the pastor's house, I was a nosy little bitch. And so I was looking at their fucking DVDs. I saw all these, uh, you know, movies with witches. I see Snow White on the shelf, bitch. What the fuck is that? I see all this stuff. I see a PlayStation. Excuse me, I thought that all every single game essentially was bad. So when you begin to see how hypocritical they are, that's when, you know, it all kind of falls apart. So, yeah. I, um... That's my thoughts. That's why I'm such a staunch anti-theist. If you wonder why I express such, like, strong hatred of Christianity, that's why. It's because it ruined, like, half of my childhood.